Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cloud Tank again. Um, right now I'm going to do another video of a demonstration of a uh, LaserDisc player. Uh, this is one I just bought recently. This is a Pioneer LaserDisc player model CLD-1190. Uh, this one's a little bit more of a high-end type, more, of, uh, more for home use than anything else. You probably see my other video, which the uh, that player um, is more for commercial use than anything else. It's not made for home use, but it does function like it's um, supposed to. It just doesn't have all the fancy features. But um, I just saw this one today at um, Goodwill store, and I just had to take a look at this thing and actually see if it actually worked at all. And as far as I knew it, um, while I was getting my car repaired. I picked this thing up at the Goodwill and bought it, of course. I also bought some um, laser disc as well, even though these are uh, kind of shitty though, and I can't understand exactly what they're out of, but apparently these are Vietnamese um, karaoke discs. This is um, volume 5 or one of them. There's um, a second volume of one. And each of these all have tracks, so... Um, I'm not just sure exactly if these things actually played right or not, but... I They do play, but unfortunately the um, picture itself is a little bit distorted. But I don't know if it's the player itself or what it is, but... Um, I think there might be something up with the player itself, since... I did have a little bit of trouble getting this thing started. I'll show you what's going on in the front here. Um... And you can see there's the power standby button, the remote sensor, with the level for the um, head jack, I believe. So I think it's got its own button control. The um, display it shows this and all the um, channels that are available. 1 through 16. Um, it's got little buttons over here. Got a hard to tell with all the lights, so... Then you got some other buttons. You got a direct CD, which I'm not sure exactly how in the heck that works. Um, there's a single button right there as well. Um, there's some other buttons right here, as you can see. Uh, pretty basic. There's this thing here, which um, I don't think this thing functions very well. So, because I try using it and it doesn't seem to function. So, I don't know if it's this thing or what it is, but. Uh, when I, recently, when I got this player, I didn't notice until I got home, but you can see there's a big dent on this, um, on the shield itself. So I'm thinking maybe someone dropped this thing or dropped something on it and something, I don't know, and kind of ruined it. But luckily it was just the top and it wasn't too badly damaged. Um, here is the um, inside. I got a, um, a CD, uh, just a regular combat disc in there right now. And this thing was a pain to get up and running. It was a bitch. I tried a regular laser disc to go in there, and the thing was just bound up. So, um, um, I think the only reason why it's binding, binding up is because since these discs are pretty thick and huge, uh, compared to a regular compact disc, this thing can't go all the way down. But I'm thinking I had this something dealing with this guy right here being in a freaking way. This piece right here. I'm thinking this had to do something about it. I'm not too sure, but um, I ended up taking this centerpiece and bending it back just so I can get this spindle loose. And you can see how loose it is right now. Uh, but when I tried it before, this thing wouldn't even turn at all because this plastic right here was hitting this for some other reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's um, a bad function or something, or somehow um, I don't know. Maybe this thing got bent somehow. I'm not too sure. But it definitely will not allow the disc to spin. The laser itself, as you can see right here, moves back and forth perfectly. And the laser seems to work just fine. Just the disc wouldn't spin. So after tinkering with it and trying to get it right, and accidentally stretch these springs a little bit so I had to bend these things up a little higher, so that way these things stay on here pretty tight. Because they have to be tight, so, so that way this thing doesn't not go too much pressure on the disc. But, um, 
yeah, so. But yeah, it definitely took me a while to get this thing up and running. It was a royal pain. Since um, this thing was very sensitive and touchy. Um, I tried wiggling some of the wires to try to get the motor to move. And even with this thing taken off, I couldn't get it to spin whatsoever. Not at all. So, I, um, I kind of had to do it like a like a car type deal. You have to jump start it somehow. Which is basically take the disc and try to spin it. So, But uh, you can see the tray does come out. So, uh, I'll show you what the tray actually goes back in. Uh, what did I do with my remote? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, I gotta grab the remote. Grab the remote. Um, this is the uh, remote for it. It's a pretty big freaking remote, if you ask me. So, But it does work. I had to replace the batteries in it because it had old batteries in there that were long since dead. So, But, um, but yeah. And for one thing I learned for um for the remote itself that the injection button right here only ejects the CD but does not put it back. So the way to put it back is unless I hit the play button. I hit the play button, then this machine goes in. Right now it's not gonna play immediately, so it's just gonna sense that something is there. Well, as soon as I hit play again, just like on the other player, it should function. Um, this thing does have uh, some troubles at times, so... I don't know what it is, but I have to give this thing a couple tries before I can get it to function correctly. There it goes. Now it's functioning. I don't know why it does that, but it, I think of this thing it had to have not been used or wore out or something. But it's playing the disc right now, so and yes, the disc is a little broke, so um, this is the only problem with this machine, it does not skip tracks very well, especially when it comes to the um, laser discs. I'm not sure why, but but yeah, you can see the thing does function. It just can be a real pain. Or I'll show you a, well, a laser disc function on it. Might take me a sec. Okay, so I'm gonna have to set the camera down real quick. I'll go grab a disc. And get that open run for you. All right, all right, got the I got the disc now. So there's the um, disc. Where we got side A pointing up. So this is gonna be one of those karaoke discs. Well, hopefully we can get this sucker up and running on the first try. Might take me a couple tries to get it right. Oh, there it goes. I'm not sure exactly what my camera's doing here, but there it goes. Now the movie's playing. Um, the only problem I have with this thing here, it, the graphics are discolored, or kind of a little shady. I'm not sure if you notice. Um, once I get a, some words that pop up on the screen. But you can kind of notice right here what it's doing, so... Uh, when it generates an image, it kind of just kind of does it like a phase, or something like that. But then when there's music playing, it kind of crackles, kind of like a record pretty much only really, was like a static like crackle but like I said I try to skip chapters with this thing and it doesn't work for crap so 
Um, I'll see if I can try getting a scan, maybe. Oh, now it's functioning. Alright. But you can hear the crackling that's going on right there. I'm not sure if it's the player itself that's causing the problem, or the disc is dirty, or what it is. But, uh, but I know another thing though. If you ex if I if you accidentally just tap this thing or even bump it, the um, laser does tend to go on a fritz. Um, I'm not sure. um, if anyone can actually explain why that is, then that might be helpful. So. And also might be to help me if what I can actually do about this crackling sound and the bad video output on this thing. Cause I like I said, I do not know if it's the head going out or what it is. But but yeah. I'll stop this thing real quick. And pull the disc out. And it finally manages to get itself to break. For some reason, when I first got it up and running, the darn thing wouldn't break for crap. It just wouldn't slow the disc down. It just keep on constantly down to flying spin, so. But, yeah. You can see the player does work. And a lot of people might be asking, how much did you actually pay for this machine, maybe? Well, I'll tell you on this video, of course. I'm not going to put it in the description, but I will put it down there just in case you want to look up a check. I paid $8 for this machine. And just to prove to you, here's the um, price tag for it. $7.99. So, 8 bucks for this machine. And these things usually run about 50 bucks or more, especially for these top-end ones. For some cheap ones, you can get it probably about close to about 30 bucks if you wanted a cheap one. Which is basically the same thing that I got in my room right now. In my sister's room right now. Stored up, so. But, yeah. And of course, this thing does take a while for it to shut off. It probably takes about like, like 10 to 15 seconds before the darn thing finally shuts off. But yeah. But that's the um, CED. Um, um, oh, not CED. What am I saying? <laughs> that is the LaserDisc Pioneer Machine. Thanks for watching.